some of the uh, the great moments from a uh, manned space flight. Uh, not necessarily what's going on at the Voyager 2 at the moment. As far as we know, nobody is aboard. We, is we, we, we just wanted to, to wake folks up. We wanted to wake people up, yep. yes. Uh, you're watching Neptune all night that is being broadcast throughout the country here from WHYY in Philadelphia. And uh, we have as a guest here uh, a member of uh, the radio and television and uh, filmmaking community who's had a long and distinguished career. He first made his appearance at the Century of Progress Exposition in 1933 portraying the young Thomas Edison in the pageant of electricity. He soon moved on to roles in local radio shows and became a well-known performer by the age of 17. And uh, he's traveled around, been involved in science fiction radio. And uh, I'd like to welcome here to Neptune All Night, George Tirebarter. Thank you very much. Uh, I understand you're the only science fiction filmmaker ever to stage a movie on Neptune. Why Neptune, George? Well, well said. It's wonderful to be with you on this historic occasion. It's not much easier to get my voice to you from uh, Washington State than it is to get the signals from Neptune. But I'm pleased to uh, to discuss this old film of mine with you. Uh, this was during the early 1950s. Uh, uh, there was a great cycle of those classic movies like Destination Moon and Invaders from Mars, you know, and... So there was a tremendous rush to bring uh, out uh, these alien space travel movies. Uh, the, the plots were, uh, you know, we go there or, or they come here, pretty much. That was it. And uh, they, they'd used up the moon pretty well. They had the big sound stage set over at Paranoid Pictures. They, they did those lunar landings with Mr. Armstrong there, I think, years later. It looked just like it anyway. But, uh, well, I did uh, Mars is Ours. I did that as a serial for Captain Equinox. He was sort of our commando Cody, a hero type. He wore a, a safari suit, a football helmet, um, dark glasses, you know. And he had a reverse twist on that War of the Worlds idea. Where it, we, we go get them before they come and get us. It was a kind of a Cold War science fiction movie. That was very good. And we had Catwomen of Venus... Sort of a sleazy jungle movie. Uh, you know, Venus was supposed to be covered with a rainforest. That's what all those pulp writers we hired at a penny a word, they told us that. Uh, 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 Republic, now Republic did, uh, let me think, they did radar zombies. The radar zombies were from the cold side of Mercury. They wore ski parkers with little flashlights for their eyes. And uh, Well, let's see, there was atomic uh, invaders from Planet X. There was Texas Rangers versus the Ring People from Saturn. We were running very low on, on planets, he said. That was, that was how I came to Neptune. Well, what about Pluto? Oh, Pluto. Well, Walt Disney had a, had a copyright on Pluto. Uh-huh, and, uh, uh-huh. uh, who'd come to see uh, they came from Pluto, anyway? It, uh, sounds like a cartoon about singing ticks. Uh, so, <laughs> well, uh, that left Neptune and Jupiter. Uh, and, of course, that that other planet that no one can pronounce the name of. I I, I wouldn't even want to say it. Not No, now, no, not you don't even want to try TV. to mispronounce it, no. No, no fr- frankly, said, you know, I think we'd have been a lot better off if they'd called that planet Herschel. Doesn't that have a nice <laughs> ring to it? Mars, Venus, Jupiter, Saturn, Herschel, Neptune, and Pluto. Uh, astrologers would have a good time with that, too, I think. <laughs> well, so, uh, your Herschel is a retrograde in the fourth house, which means to expect a surprise visit from your brother-in-law, I suppose, or something like that. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, come means, on, George. Uh, 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 oh, yes, ga- ga- gas music from Jupiter. That was a musical from Metro. Uh, they made it in true color. It wasn't, of course. It was seafoam green and uh, uh, red, the color of the stuffing and jelly donuts, you know. They showed it all the worst movie marathons. Well, So it was up to me, Sedge. I was blacklisted. I was writing under an assumed name, uh, George Typewriter, at, at the smallest and most pathetic studio in Culver City. What choice did I have? <laughs> None. So I wrote 13 episodes of Nomads from Neptune, one of the last serials ever made. <laughs> well, what, what did Neptune look like in your movie, George? We're, we're oh. seeing... Uh pictures now. What did it look like yes. in your film? Well, oddly enough, I'm seeing these same pictures, and it looked quite similar to what we're seeing now. A big fuzzy blue ball. Wait wait a minute. Uh, it, maybe that's Pete Rose I'm looking at. No, no, that's, 
that's Triton. I've been watching a lot of television today. Well, uh, we had one of those arousing science fiction magazine cover artists did paintings for us, and he just came up with this blue ball. It was quite nice. Also, the female costumes, they were very nice, too. Uh, well, but the trick was, now, let me tell you this. We knew that Triton, this moon, it went backward in its orbit. So I landed Commander Mark Time, uh, official representative of the Circumsolar Federation, on Triton which had been going backward for so long that it worked just like a time machine. Triton flung Mark forward into the past. <laughs> Very clever plotting. Was there an yes, alien indeed. monster in your film? Oh, George? alien monsters all over the place. I mean, we had a uh, very small uh, small uh, budget for those kinds of things. We, uh, this was, uh, it was from this movie that that expression that you may have heard, Worser and a Neptunian Nessie came from. That, uh, the oh, Nessie course. was a sort of a methane sea monster that leaped in and out of those gas bergs up there on Triton, uh, made entirely out of cheesecloth dipped in cream of wheat. Uh, <laughs> not much money for special effects. Uh. Well, I haven't uh, seen Nomads from Neptune, George. Uh, I, I assume it's uh, in an archive somewhere nowadays. Oh, well, here's the end of the story, Said It's lost forever. The entire archive of Master Prince from Monarch Studios destroyed, completely destroyed by fire. A raging brush fire on Mulholland Drive burned to the ground. The great structure which housed these priceless prints. It was a, a two-car garage belonging to an old-time director of those B-movies, a fellow named Spencer Bennett. No, uh, I'm afraid that, that uh, Nomads from Neptune was released only once in 1955 on a double bill with Arizona Serenade. <laughs> it starred Tim McCoy and, I don't know, either Abbott and Costello or Ronnie Reagan. It may be both well, of them. I don't know. Well, George, we, we look forward also to, uh, to hearing more of this in your biography when it comes out. I want to thank you for joining us, Hollywood legend, George Tirebiter. Well, thank you, Sedge, and a fond farewell to that little voyager wherever it goes now. George Tirebiter and his longtime associate David Osmond are frequent hosts for public radio programs, including radio movies. From the Bride and the Sunday Show, Osmond's most recent interplanetary adventure is the War of the Worlds 50th anniversary production starring Jason Robards, which he directed. It'll be once again heard over many public radio stations this coming Halloween.